Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about Java versus JavaScript. When we talk about Java or when we talk about JavaScript, this is the first question that will come up in your mind that are there any similarities between Java and JavaScript or are there any differences between Java and JavaScript? In this video, we are going to demystify all the facts that are there between Java and JavaScript. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new updates on video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoyed this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on this video, any queries or suggestions and I will respond to your comments. Now let's get started. In this video, we are first going to talk about the introduction of Java and JavaScript. Then we'll talk about the differences or you can see uh, what are the key factors that differentiate Java and JavaScript. And finally, we'll conclude with the differences of Java and JavaScript. Now let's get started. So let's talk about the introduction first. Java is a high level object oriented programming language that was originally developed by Sun Microsystem. It was originally developed for a digital cable industry, but soon we found out that, okay, this is too advanced for that. And later we decided this Java should be a high level object oriented programming language. And now it follows a principle of Vora. What do you mean by Vora? It means that you're going to write your code once and you are going to compile it. And then whenever you are trying to run it on a different machine, you just have to take out that whatever is the output of that whenever you compile your code in Java, it will be in the form of bytes, right? You will get a byte code. And whenever you take that byte code and try to run it on a different machine, you don't have to compile it again. It will simply run. Okay. That is the beauty of this principle that is right once run everywhere. Obviously in the other machine, it should be a Java supported platform, right? And there is no need for recompilation. Okay. This is an introduction. We already have videos on in Java separately, right? And entirely we will talk about Java, its, its features and all those things here. That is not the objective. Okay. Here we are just introducing this topic that it is a high level object oriented programming language and that's it. And it follows one principle, which is Vora. Now let's try to understand the introduction of JavaScript. If you talk about JavaScript, when you talk about a website, it is a collection of web pages, right? And they are clubbed web together. So whenever you are trying to structure your web page, that is with the help of HTML, right? And then you want to style it. That is with the help of CSS or some frameworks like bootstrap and all right. Now, whenever you're trying to click or make this web page, or you want to perform any actions on this web page, right? Therein your JavaScript will come into picture. Let's suppose here you want to add a button and whenever you are clicking on this button, there should be a image of a person that is there and along with its intro, right? Now those actions you will perform with the help of JavaScript. It is an object oriented programming language that uses just in time compiler. Now what is this just in time compiler? When you talk about just in time compiler, there are two things, interpreter and compiler. Now, whenever you're talking about these two things, it is the best of these two worlds that is present in this just in time compiler. And when you talk about browsers where you run your program, obviously when you talk about JavaScript without its frameworks or the environments that it provides now, like Node.js and frameworks like uh, React.js, right? Or Vue.js or Angular.js, we're not talking about them, right? JavaScript can be run on browsers and all the browsers are installed with it, right? So this is the brief introduction of JavaScript. Now let's talk about what are the differences or key differences between Java and JavaScript. If you want to write a, a print statement or you want to print something on your console in Java, this is the set of statements that you have to write. There are some keywords. We are not talking about the code here. Again, we are talking about the ease of 
how you can print something in Java. So you have to use these access modifiers, then the keywords like class, then there is void, right? All of these are keywords. Static is a keyword. Public is a keyword, right? And all of these public are access modifiers. Then you have the string ARGS, which is, you know, data type here, or you can say it is a class in Java which helps us to send something from a command line. And this is the name of the class. And then finally, if you want to print something, you have to use this statement that is system.out.println and then the output will be hello world, right? This will be the output. But now if you want to do the same thing in JavaScript, how can you do it? There's a simple line of code that is console.log hello world. And you will get in your console, you will get this message hello world. Now, what are the key differences between this and this? So obviously, when you talk about Java, there's a restriction that everything should be inside a class. But this is not restricted. Obviously, it is recommended in JavaScript. It is not restricted that you can use like this or you can use a class and then write the print statement. But it's not restricted, right? Now, if you want to declare or initialize something in Java, so you have to declare first the data type, then the name of the variable, and then its value, right? So this is the simple statement. Similarly, if you have to define a string, yeah, there's a class associated with that. We have string class, and then the name of the string, and then what is the value of the string? So this is how you initialize and declare in Java. So you have to specify the data type or the type of data you want to store in that particular variable that is a and name, right? Now, if you want to do the same thing in JavaScript, how can you do it? You have this where keyword, which is used to define this a. Now in this a, what you are doing, you are storing 10. That means this a is a number. In JavaScript, the data type is number. Now, if you want to define another variable that is name and you want to define it, the data type should be string. How should you write it? Again, you are using the same keyword that is this where and you're writing the string that is name, which is a string and you're storing some value. Now, if you talk about the differences between this statement and this statement, obviously when you're specifying something over here that this is the integer data type and this is a string data type that you want to store in this, your string is a class, right? We are not getting into those details, right? The objective here is that if you want to define a variable with integer, you have to explicitly mention its data type, right? which is not the case in JavaScript. So this is known as what? When you don't have to specify those data types explicitly, this is known as dynamic. Dynamically typed. So your JavaScript is a dynamically typed language, wherein your Java is a statically typed language. Okay. Now let's talk about the data type conversion. Let's suppose you have this integer i and which is storing 20. Now, if you want to convert this integer into a string, so you have to perform this operation. That is, you have this class integer and then you have this method to string, which is you, in which you are passing this 20. Now this 20 will be converted into, into a string like this, right? So you have to perform this operation. There is no automatic conversion, right? You have to explicitly mention or you have to explicitly show the compiler how you are converting your 20 into a string. This is in Java. Now, if you want to perform a similar operation in JavaScript, you just have to specify this thing that let's suppose this I was a number earlier, right? And now you want to convert it into a string. So you just have to specify this I equal to I, which is 20 plus the string. Now, if you look into this I, or you want to check the data type of this I, you will see that this is a string. Now, if you don't believe me, you can check with the help of type of operator. First use this, you will get the type of number, which is used to check the data type of your variables. Let's suppose this is you want to check the data type of I, you have to specify type of, and then you have to specify the variable that you are, you want to check. So you will see that this is a number. Now, if you want to check the type of this I again, you will get string, right? Now there is something which is known as automatic type coercion, or you can say that type coercion. 
okay now what is a type question it is converting one type into another right earlier it was a number and it is now converted into a string so this type question is allowed in javascript but it is not allowed in java so this is why your javascript is a weakly typed language okay and when you talk about java this is a strongly typed language okay strongly typed language now coming to the scope of java let's suppose you have this class a right forget about the syntax guys we are not talking about syntax we are talking about some of the major differences okay so let's suppose this is a class and in this class you have some method which is fun one and inside this fun one you are calling another method which is fun two so these are two methods right so now why i'm calling it a method obviously whenever your function is inside a class it is known as a method okay now you have this class over here and inside this you have one function which is fun one and inside this you are calling this fun two which is over here and both of them are inside this class right now whenever you have this driver function which is over here which is why I'm calling this a driver function because this is where our execution will start. Okay, so we are creating an object of this class A and then we are calling with the help of this object we are calling fun one, right? And in this fun one, when we are calling this fun one, obviously the scope of this is public, right? So we can call it even if it was a private since it is in the same class, we can call it. Okay, so now what happens? We are calling this function fun one and we are printing this now this refers to the current object and we are trying to print the this is not an address basically you can think of it as an address but it is basically an identity hash map okay let's not get into those details let's suppose this is for simplicity this is the address now this is the address of the object as we can see that we are calling this fun one with the help of this object right obj for simplicity this is the address of that object now inside that we are calling this fun two and we are printing this again that means both of these functions are associated with this object right simple this is the scope of java whatever happens in java but if you're trying to do the similar thing in javascript let's suppose we are creating one object this is how you create an object let's not get into details how we are creating this objects right here we are not focusing on how we can write these things but we are focusing on the differences okay so here what we have we have an object and in this object we have this fun one and in this fun one we are calling again a function which is first we are declaring this function with the help of function expression and then we are calling it inside the same object okay similar stuff what we did in java now here we are calling this function fun one now again we are printing this over here which is referring to the current object now if you see when we talk about the scope of javascript here the first function is associated with this object but the second function is associated with the window that what is this window window is the well, let's suppose whenever you're running your program in the browser this is the object of a browser okay this window object okay so it is not currently binded or just like we saw in the java both of those functions were associated with that object but here one function is associated with the object other is not why this is happening because in javascript you need to bind this function there is something which is known as binding or you can also use an arrow function over here wherein if you are using this arrow function this here you will also get the same output as above that means both of these functions are binded with this object okay now what is the major or when you can say the conclusion of these two things the scope of java and javascript is that in javascript it does not matter where your function is written obviously your function is written inside this you might be thinking okay both of these are referred or both of these are part of this object but that is not the case it does not matter where you are writing it matters who is calling that function in this case the second function is called with the help of window object okay now let's talk about method overloading very important in java when you're trying to overload a method right so let's suppose what do you mean by overloading basically you have this public void 
display you have this public while display again the only difference is, is that the number of arguments right the signature will be same name of the function will be same there will be different arguments right and the return type it does not depend on the return type okay so it can be white it can be int it can be anything it does not depend on the return type now you are overloading the same function okay and here you are calling the object you are creating an object and you are calling obj display with no arguments and obj display with one argument now whenever you are running this program obviously when you are having no arguments over here it will call this function and when you have one argument over here it will call this function so here you will be printing first and then second and its value which you are passing which is 5 in this case right so this is a traditional method overloading that happens in java and it is same in all the other programming languages but when you talk about javascript it does not follow traditional method overloading now what does that mean you have a class a in this same thing display you are overloading the same function that is display and then you are creating one object over here right and then you're calling display with no arguments and then you're calling display with one argument now this calling should happen this one and two calling should have happened in a traditional method overloading but javascript does not follow that it always takes into the consideration the last implementation that no matter what you are calling if you are having one argument or two arguments it will always refer to this implementation that means whenever you are calling this obj dot display it will call this function and it will print second value since value is not there so it will be printing undefined okay and in the second obviously it will call this again and in this you are passing a value it will print second and then the value which is five okay so this is not traditional method overloading that javascript follows now let's try to finalize what we learned in this video so let's try to summarize okay when you talk about java it is an object oriented in programming language right and when you talk about javascript it is a scripting language now what is the difference if i talk about a simple difference is that in scripting language there is no need of compilation you're not compiling your programs okay now it is a statically type language we talked about it why we have to explicitly mention the data type and it is a dynamically type language java is a strongly type language that means your data types will not be converted or when you're talking about data types that means int will not be converted into string or string will not be converted into int but in javascript it is a weakly type language that means type coercion is allowed it can be run or whenever you're creating applications those applications can run on virtual machines and browsers when you talk about javascript if you talk about if you we are not talking about those runtime environments right now we have node.js we are talking about simple programs all the programs or applications which are written in javascript can be run only in browsers okay it is less popular in terms of usage when you talk about the current situation or current era in which we are this is less popular and if we talk about javascript it is gaining its popularity with the help of its frameworks like react vue.js and node.js the runtime environment that we have okay with node into picture we can run our programs or we can run our application outside the browser okay and if you talk about applications of java we have airbnb instagram and pinterest and if you talk about javascript uh, we have applications like paypal netflix facebook etc so these are the key differences between java and javascript thank you so much guys i hope you enjoyed this video and all the very best if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet i want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new updates on video releases from great learning if you enjoyed this video show us some love and like this video knowledge increases by sharing so make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues make sure to comment on this video any queries or suggestions and i will respond to your comments